For years it was a problem we literally buried. Millions of tons of rubbish put underground. More recently there's been a big push to reduce how much we produce and increase the amount we recycle. A new European report praises the UK for improving its recycling rate. But we still send a lot to landfill compared to some of our European neighbours. So where are we going wrong? Here to discuss some of the issues, we've been joined in the studio by the leader of the Conservatives here in Europe, Martin Callanan. And Dutch Green MEP Das Erkart also joins us. And let me turn to you first, Bas. Um, the Netherlands only sends, I think, about 2% of household waste to even landfill. Even less, yeah. Even, even less, less than yeah. that. True. Compared to, I think, 47% of the latest stats I have in the UK. Just how have you done it? <laughs> Well, I think it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all kinds of policies. So you've got your bio-waste, for example, and we've got separate recycling units for bio-waste, uh, for using energy out of it, for example. We have uh, specific stations where you can gather your plastic, your paper, your, well, all your glasses. So every, every citizen now, and of, of course that's also part of it, a, a major awareness raising campaign to make sure that people, for them now it's very normal to go well, if they go to shoppings, then first they drop their old things off. So the plastics in one and then another, uh, it's glasses and all that kind of stuff. But even there, if you look in Germany, for example, it's even better. So in that sense, if we compare with the UK, we're doing nicely, but, but it still can be improved. Still more to do. Still more to do. Martin, comparing that to the UK, I mean, why are we so far behind on the amount of rubbish that ends up in landfill? Historically, there's a number of different reasons. Um, firstly, the obvious one is that we actually had lots of holes in the ground to fill with, with, with landfill, and it was a very cheap method. We had lots of old mining activities, and so there were lots of holes to fill. We've become a bit more conscious about it recently, and uh, rates of recycling have gone up a bit. But um, I think there's a combination. Some of the policy responses in the UK have not been great. Um, we, I think, we instinctively dislike being told what to do, I think. And so I think it's much more important to have a policy of incentivising it in, in Britain rather than issuing a sort of local government instruction, which uh, people just tend to ignore anyway just because they don't like being told what to do. Well, you've obviously got something right in the Netherlands because you're yeah, because on... because we've got the same problem, of <laughs> course. If, if local authorities are telling people something to do, then usually they, they actually, also don't listen. Some, so of the most, some of the most successful schemes, actually, in the UK have been pioneered by local authorities that offer uh, sort of um, shopping vouchers in exchange for recycling the maximum amount of, uh, of, of goods. But we also need to look at the, the whole recycling um, strategy in terms of where does all this recyclate go? And uh, historically, there were some huge ups and downs in the market. There were, uh, you know, recycled computers discovered dumped on beaches in Africa and uh, warehouses full of, uh, of recycled paper that was supposedly be recycling, but of course it wasn't. And a lot of it is just burned anyway because there was no market for it. And uh, we have to convince people that it is worthwhile. There are gains to be made. If it benefits themselves in the pocket, then obviously that's even better. But obviously the, the overall benefit for the environment is a good thing and we should, uh, we should show people what the correct way to behave is. So obviously still mm -hmm. few problems we've got in the UK with our recycling rate. Uh, Netherlands one of the, the, the top performers. So mm -hmm. what would your kind of uh, top tips be, I suppose, well, be to, I think, you know, Martin's gov uh, party is now in the government. What would yeah, your tips yeah. be to, to him? Very environmentally friendly government, I might say as well. <laughs> For Conservatives, yes, yeah. Um, but it's all relative, right, Mr. Callanan? Now, what I do think is very important is to make sure that, that waste is getting a value. As, as Mr. Callanan said, for a long period, we've, we've been ignoring the value of waste because, well, there were no incentives to use it again. And, for example, there is energy in it. But also, if you look at the resources becoming scarcer and scarcer, then people start to realize, let's, let's reuse it. And what we have done in the Netherlands, for example, and that's really innovation by industry, so it's not even government steered, it's really the industry themselves they saw the added value when they are recycling when they are using for example 25 percent in europe of food is being ignored it's being wasted what in the netherlands now companies are starting to gather that food waste then making biofuels out of it but of course during that process a lot of heat is used and that heat is used to another 
factory staying next to it and using that heat. So all the way, in a way, there is no waste anymore. In the entire stream, it's a closed stream and even warm, even heat is used in a production process of the next factory. And I think that's becoming more and more important when our resources are becoming scarce, more industries are realizing, I can use your heat, it's for you a waste product, but for me it's a valuable product to use in my process. So let's also do that together and I think that's important as well that as a government you make sure that those companies start to collectively think of closed cycles. I think that's very crucial as well. It's, it's, it's important to use the market to, uh, to drive these initiatives. Clearly, as the price of energy goes up, people will think, well, are there ways that we could reuse energy, we can use somebody else's waste, etc. But also, if there is a value to the recyclate, then uh, people will naturally recycle it. You know, businesses will be set up, people will prosper. As long as there's an economic incentive to do it, it makes it much easier and goes with the grain of human nature more than trying to sort of force them to do it by either EU or local diktat. I mean, on that question, there is this EU target that by 2020 <coughs> we're supposed to be recycling 50% of household waste. I mean, do you think European targets like that are, are helpful in this process? Actually, no. Um, what they do is they, they drive certain behaviours um, and a lot of it, your local authorities will just end up paying a lot of fines. So they, they indulge in false recycling. There's, there's incentives to uh, not fiddle the figures, but adjust the figures. Uh, as I've said before, well, when do you classify something as being, as being recycled? If you take it off a consumer and stick it in a warehouse, and so it's all stacked up because there's no market for it, is that being recycled? It hasn't been put to landfill, but it hasn't been used for a productive use either. Um, I, I, I think these targets have little value they uh, they drive people to, to 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 work towards the target rather than what is genuinely market driven recycling um, they, they, they drive people towards a percentage of, uh, of quantity rather than the actual valuable recyclate which uh, which would contribute more to, to economic development so well, I think these things disagree. are best determined here, locally. here we clearly disagree because that's always the case when when people are talking about green issues they the, on the contents they think yeah it's a good thing but then as soon as we're talking about policies making it happen, then it's, oh, it's too much of interference of government. And I know in the UK, especially when the EU is doing that, it's even more problematic. But I think, I mean, it's an average of the EU, but of course the EU is monitoring at the national level, what's happening at the national level. And if you see those percentages are going up, and therefore, for example, the Commission had decided to applaud the UK for the increase. I mean, it's still, around, it's still at 40 or 35 to 40 percent now, so also the Commission could have chosen, well, you've got nine years left and you've got another 10 percent to make, but the increase is, is helpful and, you know, and that's what the EU can do. It's not like steering all the, all the market rules, that's not what the EU is doing. It's setting targets and then at the national level all those countries have the member states have to work towards those targets let me ask you Bas what you do when you get kind of way beyond the 50 percent as, as the Netherlands is, is doing the EU kind of warning of a, of a, of a leveling off being, being a risk you said uh, uh, maybe there's nothing su no, no such thing as waste anymore but mm -hmm. those difficult products those low energy light bulbs that I know Martin's been concerned about in, mm -hmm. in the past for example what do you do with those products that are a lot harder to recycle than, say, the paper and the glass that we're all getting used to uh, yeah, dealing absolutely. with? Well, but I think, therefore, also the Commission is talking about, the European Commission, talking about we have to more gear our policies towards a kind of waste hierarchy, you know? Preventing is the best, of course. Using less material for your package, then you have less waste. So preventing is the first option. Then what you do is try to recycle once you do it. Reusing, sometimes also metals. A lot of metals can be reused. We're not doing that. If you look in buildings, how much metal is being discarded? We can reuse it. So it's, it's really preventing, reuse, recycle, then try to get all the energy out of it. And then the bottom line, the only thing you can do after incineration, landfilling. But there really, the, the Dutch are at more, more or less 1%. And I think that's, that's really, I'm not saying that that should be the European target, but at least we can show that landfilling is the last resort and really you can make it a very low level at the end if you work in a hierarchy. Martin, just finally, your government now, your, your party rather, in power in the UK, what specifically is planned to tackle these issues to get waste down to a minimum and to improve recycling? 
well, of course, we are committed to uh, to, to meeting the EU targets. Um, help. <coughs> uh, well, we have to, otherwise we'd be fined if we didn't. Yeah, so we, <coughs> so uh, we, we are committed to doing that. And I think they, they're, they're looking at a range of different schemes in uh, appropriate local authorities. Some are incentivising. I mentioned the schemes earlier with uh, with shopping vouchers, etc. But of course, it is producing a lot of concerns as well because a number of people are complaining about uh, weekly rubbish collections have been abolished in in certain areas, which of course me. Uh, in an attempt to make them recycle more. Uh, that, of course, upsets people because it leaves their festering rubbish on the ground for longer and it's produced certain health problems. So they, you have to take people with you by uh, providing incentives, by, by convincing them to go the right way rather than forcing them with a draconian manner because that produces more problems. But I think the government is committed on trying to make progress in this area and uh, there are a number of different innovative schemes uh, in different areas. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. We'll have to leave it there. But thanks to you both very much for joining us. Yes, thank you.